Hi, thanks so much for joining me today in this class of drawing the kitchen table. I have sort of recreated a table scene here um, where it's just objects from I've got lying around at home. You can have as many or as little as you want. I've got a plate, knife and fork, salt and pepper, a jug, bowl of tomatoes, flowers, but feel free to use less or more items. I've got a newsprint here, which I'm going to be using, and I'm going to start off by drawing with um, oil pastels. I really like just doing loose sketches with these because the marks are super confident and, and they're very visible, so you kind of can't ignore them. So you can't rub anything out, and as soft as you are with it, it will still show, which I really like because it kind of forces you to be quite bold. Um, I also like how it moves on the paper because it sort of almost moves for you a lot of the time because of the weight of it, but you can use pencil, pen, crayon, felt tip, whatever you have available to you. Because of the way that I'm standing, I'm looking down on this, um, this still life, but if you're sitting down at a table, you can have it in front of you, or however, whatever works for you. I am going to start with the first object that I've seen, which I look at, is the plate. And then I'm going to move out from the plate as I go. I'm not going to worry if I can't fit everything I see on the paper, because depending on how large my plate is, it will determine what can fit in this sketch. But this is just a very simple and quick exercise just to kind of show how I work um, and the kind of steps that I take to get to a final picture. So yeah, here we go. I am going to start with one corner of the one bit of the plate and go round. So this is my lip of the plate. So I'm just being very like quick with the marks, not worrying too much about um, if they are perfect interpretations of what's in front of me. It's more just so they're recognisable as what they are. And everyone knows what a knife and fork looks like. My plate has a pattern on it, but obviously plates are often just white. So I'm gonna just very quickly do, the, draw the pattern that's in the plate. If you don't have a pattern, I encourage you um, to, make one up. This can either be diagonal zigzags, you could do scallops, um, you could do stars, and then we just want to add a bit of shading with whatever we're using. So it's just the same colour. I'm also sort of making this shape, this pattern up on my, um, what's, I'm using what's there, but kind of not drawing it at exactly how it is. Um, to just enjoy the drawing element. So I'm going to draw the blue of my plate and draw in so there's like a background so you can get an idea. A lot of my my work I make up patterns um, either from things I've seen or just from my head and make, make them up. Um, I like lots of contrasting patterns within works the same work so when stuff doesn't have anything on it I can I often add anyway to make it up so that is the uh, the plate the plate is not very round but that's okay I'm gonna add the mat now so roughly and I for the angle I can only see the part of the mat um, now from there I'm going to look at the what's directly above it from my angle is the tomatoes so there's a bit of space doesn't matter that the space is you don't have to measure the space just put a bit of space and then draw the first part so I'm going to draw the curve of the bottom of the bowl and then the edge of the top of the bowl the way I'm looking at it and then I'm going to start drawing the tomatoes or as much of them as I can see Again, the lip of the plate, just 
a little bit of sense of depth. I'm actually going to move these because you can't really see them from my angle. Um, so I'm going to just draw now what's left of this. So I'm looking, I'm kind of going on a journey to, across the paper. I'm going to go over here and draw the first leaf that I look at of the tulip. And we will go for it. Um, as I said, with these materials, they sort of often do the work for you. So if you just hold it in a certain way, it allows your hands to relax around it and then you can kind of not overthink each mark that you make and just keep the keep whatever material you're using on the on the paper. Um, just because so then the stalk comes from here. And we'll go like that. And actually the stalk doesn't the vase isn't isn't going to be on this, but that's okay. We could do the edge so you understand that there is a vase there. Like that. So then the next stalk, you can actually see the stalk through the vase, this glass, and then we come up and we go up here. And we, again, just whatever we can fit in, it doesn't matter if you crop out or don't include everything that's in front of you, just do you want to. So now I'm going to draw the lines of the tablecloth, so it just gives a whole new perspective of the drawing um, and I kind of like, even though a lot of my work I start off as if it's floating, I like how these sort of, yeah, create almost measurements of the drawing. They're not going to be exact at all, but I just like the sort of diagonal, the lines going across from one another. From what I know of it, I'm, I'm making the lines, I'm guessing where these lines are sort of going. Again, this diagonal and the next one. So it's just breaking up the work for me. So you can see that it's kind of a table with things on it. Um, it's pretty abstract, it's pretty loose and abstract, but that's great for the first first one. So now I'm going to add other colours into this work. Feel free to use whatever you have available to you. I can do these oil pastels just because of the mark that they're making for the, for the visibility on this. I tend to choose colours as I see what's available to me. I mean, I have a lot of oil pastels that I've collected over the years. I like little jewels, I love them so much. I'm going to pick out this green. I'm not looking and thinking, oh, I need to match the colours to what's there. I'm actually just going to improvise um, and see how they work. So what I'm first going to do is actually play with the kind of the actual tablecloth and how you have these spaces and geometric shapes beneath the objects um, and it will sort of almost pull these these objects out. So I'm just filling in the main big large areas that have been left under these objects. So now I'm going to fill in these lines um, in a different colour. I'm going to choose red for one of them. Feel free to use any colours. Um, don't copy me. Don't you don't have to copy me. The main thing is not to overthink the colours you're using and just go for it because this is just a quick drawing, so it's a matter of they don't work. It's almost like a bit of a grid system here. So you can get a sense that there's a repeat pattern almost of the tablecloth. Um, great, and then I'm going to draw in the other colours 
quite like the idea of having colour on the plate of these shapes here. Again, I'm not overthinking my choice, but I'm going to just choose whatever is in front of me. So I'm going to, I've got a pink to go. You want to just fill out, you can leave areas of white, but just try and fill out some of these areas. It just sort of boosts your idea of colour in, in work. I'm going to actually put it on the outside as well. And then we'll just do the flower with petals in one colour, keep it simple. So I'm going to use... I'm actually going to use a dark colour. I'm going to use black. I like when you leave areas of white. I do that a lot in my work. You don't have to draw paint in everything so meticulously. You can actually just leave areas to speak for themselves, not make everything match all to the line. You can actually just fill it in quite roughly. Okay, so that's the finished piece of the the first sketch. It looks quite, it doesn't look anything like what's here in terms of the colours and the perspective, but it's still an interpretation of a kitchen table that's allowing us to actually have fun with the drawing and, you know, just enjoy it and not worry about everything being in perfect perspective from one another. I like when things are slightly distorted. I do that a lot in my work because it gives things character. So for the first exercise, I hope you try and just loosen up as much as possible. For my second drawing exercise, I'm going to just draw one object and then make up the, the setting it's in. So I'm going to draw this yellow sort of ceramic teapot from there. You know, I'll be drawing it like this, so from this angle. Um, I'm going to use ink and a paintbrush, but obviously feel free to use whatever you can for what you have available at home. Um, I love this colour, it's Bordeaux, it's like a really nice maroon colour. So I'm going to again be very loose, but just sort of draw just one object to start off with. So that's the top. I'm not sort of working out my head too much the exact measurements of it and just enjoying these fluid marks um, variety of shapes of line of curves so that is the just the outline of it I'm gonna make up my own pattern for inside the teapot um, and I'm going to have polka dots, different size circles. I'm actually going to create a little sort of almost sun shape around them um, just to make them a bit more exciting little circles. Be for anything. If you look around, whatever is in front of you, it could be stripes, it could be a flower shape, it could be um, zigzag. So, or maybe the reference from a from a magazine or a book if you want. So now I'm going to just very loosely. around them in the same colour. You can do this as neatly or as roughly as you want. So there's our teapot. Um, so I'm going to change my brush and colour and pick another colour. Um, 
to create the sort of surface for it to sit on. And a green match made shirt. So I'm going to put it on a round table. This can just be a preliminary sketch for a more finished piece if you like it, so don't, it doesn't need to be perfect. Now, for the table, I'm going to have something behind the pot, so I'm going to either look at something around me um, or make something up in my head. I'm going to put a sort of doorway in it. Very rough doorway. Could be a window. It's just contrasting shapes. And then I'm going to just paint the outside of it blue. There you go, you can see very roughly. So now I'm going to put something in the doorway. I'm probably going to use a light colour because these colours in purple and blue are quite dark. So I think I'll use a, a nice orangey colour to go behind. I'm just using direct on these pots. The paper is so thin, so you can see it's sort of the ink's just seeping through it. But look with that. So you just want to kind of almost pull out this object into the foreground a bit. Put something behind. And so we've got our sort of base um, colours and using ink I've just roughly painted in flat areas of colour around it. So now I'm going to add in some patterns or textures on top of these colours. I'm going to use oil pastels, just because they're, I can just quite easily go on top of these, but if you're using watercolour, you can use felt tape on top, or um, you just want to use something that's a different medium, so you can get brush strokes with this, maybe use something where you don't get the same mark, it's a different mark, and it sits quite nicely on top. Obviously, I'm aware that supply is limited at the moment, so just see what you have, and don't worry if it's not exactly what I'm using. I'm now going to draw in the circles of the of the teapot, um, and I'm going to draw them in. Not with any of those. Draw them in the light lightest colour. So I'm going to use a, a kind of light pink, pulling sort of areas out. Then the table. Let's use. I think I'm going to use the red. So I'm going to give an outline of the table and then I'm going to work in some pattern um, on the table. So what I'm going to do is circles going inwards. And finally, I'm going to add something on this orange behind. I might just leave it a sec because it's going to like, rip the paper because it's so thin. So could either, I'm going to do some sort of geometric shape, probably either um, crisscross or stripes or have a look. Use a nice new bright orange. And I'm just going to do zigzags. So that is finished. Um, as you can see, it's sort of, it's just nice having something on top that's a different texture, different material. You'll be able to see when I bring the camera closer. But it's just, again, just playing around with composition, making using your imagination. Um, you don't have to go completely mad using it. You can just put a rough circle table or a straight line on the table or, you know, just re like familiar objects, familiar shapes to you. Um, I'm not trying to be too clever with it. So you can see how different the drawings are one another. You can see that they're very different ways of drawing, but drawing objects, drawing familiar objects that are in the home, um, on the kitchen table or in the kitchen or wherever.
different perspectives of different objects. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyed it. Um, I'd love to see what you're making, so please do send in on email or tag me, Rose Lecture Harris and Partnership Editions on social media. Um, please message if you have any questions or you want to know anything further. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so, so much. Bye.